even as early as five years ago, uh, you would get a whole, you know, annually a bunch of partners coming from China to, to the Valley to basically get up to date on the new innovative models that are happening in, in the Valley. Uh, recently, the partners in the Valley go over to China to do the same thing. Right? And uh, I, I was just talking to an entrepreneur here about a copy to US model recently, just a few days ago. So uh, innovation happens when there's intense competition and when you have to innovate. Right? And in a lot of these areas, you're going to find um, uh, that because the competition is intense, you get really, really interesting ideas, like all the live streaming stuff, that's all coming out of China. Um, so um, when, when, you look at, um, when you look at Southeast Asia, you know, how, how do you guys think about copy two models? Do you think about it from the US? Do you think about it from China? Do you think about it from India? Do you, you say, no, we don't want copy two models? Uh, what do you guys think? Um, for me, I definitely look at the company in the US and in China a lot. Because there are certain things that China has that's more similar to Indonesia than the US. A lot of their business model is and how they operate is a lot more similar. Um, but the most exciting thing, and that's the reason why I'm still doing what I'm doing, is because you can't really copy everything to Indonesia and you hope it will work. And that's why it's exciting for me. It's that like you look at all this stuff, and then you, some company might copy it for the first time, but, but there will be different challenges you have to tackle in terms of like you know people income or behavior or their ecosystem and stuff. So that's why for me it's very fun. But I do take a look at the food delivery in, in the US, in China, in the Europe, and what is going on around, to kind of get where are they going, and should be, be thinking about that, but not necessarily like, we have to do exactly what they're doing. Um, I, I think I, I, it's, I tend to look at the US, but I think that's just the, uh, a product of me being from here, and then kind of just being like, Connected in the valley, I just I feel like just in my like social networks, I just hear about stuff that happens in the do, US. Do you read Mandarin? I don't read Mandarin, and I don't speak Chinese, so I, I feel like I'm kind of like out. Um, See. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I feel like I gotta learn Mandarin. Yeah. Yeah. Um, especially in Singapore, um, but I feel like I have. Uh, I feel increasingly like I need to actually spend more time in China, and I, I to echo your like thoughts. I have friends who are like just spending way more time in China to kind of like see what's going on there. Um, and primarily in kind of like, I think there's specific spaces that I think are, China has definitely added, like mobile payments there is like ubiquitous at this point. I feel like I thought I was open-minded and then I traveled more and I feel like I was like even more open-minded because I was, there was just all these rules that I thought like had to be there. There were like physics laws, but actually it was just like, that's just an American thing. Um, so I think, I, I'm trying to get, spend more time looking other places just because I feel like I've already gotten so much of the American uh, view. It's a difficult question to answer because sometimes you get to the same result even if you didn't intend it to be a copy to model. And especially, even if the it's the same pain point, but the degree of the impact of that pain point is remarkably different. So for example, the unbanked public in Southeast Asian countries has led to peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms, but I, I know that um, the founders of some of these peer-to-peer -peer lending platforms that I've met have no idea what their counterparts in the U.S. were or, who, or, th or that they even existed. In fact, their pitch decks say we're the first ever in the world. <laughs> and that's just because they haven't you know, done the diligence that they've actually existed in, in more mature markets addressing the same pain point to a different degree. Um, by looking at growth companies out of the United States with technologies that we probably wouldn't predict to be built in Southeast Asia over the next three years, so maybe two or three years ahead of what uh, you would expect out of Southeast Asia. We're almost like pumping the market with technologies of, of proven companies um, that we're more than happy not to replicate um, so that no one just spends on that, bring into the market and then sort of create kind of 
kind of like a catalyst or a hormone shot of sorts, right, to, to the ecosystem. So a nice mix might work for the region.